Well, I appreciate everybody coming today. Um, I had a webinar not too long ago on the same topic, but we've actually evolved it a bit and it is released and it's available now. And that is gift cards, loyalty accounts, and grants. So I want to just review with you what we've done, show you how you can use them, how you can sell them, uh, just give you a more complete picture. So let's just jump right into it. So as, uh, as is normal, we keep these to 45 minutes or less. I don't think we'll have a problem with that today. If you have any questions, just submit those right to the questions area on your control panel. And uh, within a day or so, we'll get this uh, up on the site. So if anybody wants to share, share it with somebody or review it, you can go and do that. So I just want to talk about uh, the three different payment instruments that are available. Uh, and it's up to you which one or all three of these that you enable for your organization. Um, essentially, what we allow is for a gift card, and the gift card is, think of it as a prepaid money card that you can use for any double knot purchase. So a user can be issued or a user can purchase a gift card. Um, they can give it to somebody to use, and that gift card they can use for any online registration or submit it for payment at point of sales, sales station, and it can be used as a form of payment. Loyalty card is very similar, except the loyalty card is typically used for maybe key volunteers, or you can use it for, uh, in the Boy Scout world, troop accounts might be an option for it, though you, you can use gift cards for that as well. But typically it's something as an incentive plan that you give to certain groups of users or volunteers within your organization. The third component is grants. So we've been for a long time, people have been wanting to use grants as a form of payment within the system and keep track of where and how those grant monies were used, obviously to create the reports that are necessary uh, to support the use of that grant. Um, and so the three of these instruments are available and they differ slightly from each other. So if we look at grants, loyalty, and gift cards. Grants is something that only administrators through the administrative interface can use as a partial or all total payment against a, a purchase. And it could be a purchase of anything or registration. Maybe it's a school group visit where the grant is used to uh, offset the cost of, of certain visits to your venue for, for a school. So grants, it's very controlled as the where it can be used. Whereas loyalty and gift cards can be entered at sales station by the customer themselves online or by the administrator on the back end. So this is an administrator that would be using the non-sales um, sales station interface. So that's where these can be used. Grants is the one that's most limiting because you want to control everything we've heard when we talk to people about this. You want to control the use of that grant. So let's go over some of the features um, that I want to show you today, and I'll go over that. Is you we have the system, we have the ability now in the system for you to put on sale gift cards. And the gift cards can be purchased online or through the sales station itself. An email is delivered with the gift card number, which can then be entered in and used as a form of payment. Uh, and the email they receive is a customized template, and I'll show you that as well. So gift cards, we've, we now allow you to go and sell those online. Now, I just want to point out a gift card, I'm going to emphasize this, can be used, any of these instruments can be used for any purchase. So some of you have uh, gift certificates. A gift certificate typically is constrained use uh, for a particular item, whereas a gift card can be used for any um, purchase, either online, a double knot, or a point of sale. It's surprising the number of people that we've been talking to about this feature and, and see it just as a, a real revenue generating opportunity. The ability for someone to buy a gift card and hand it out as a present, or if it's a scout at camp, a parent can buy a gift card and they could use that 
for their purchases at, at camp. Uh, so it's a way for you to collect and make more money uh, in the process of doing that. Grants, loyalties, and um, excuse me, gift cards, loyalty accounts, and grant, grants behave the same way as a credit card. In other words, you could use that as a payment. You could also refund money, which puts it back onto that appropriate account. You can reload and adjust the balances, and I'll show you where you can do that. Um, and you can support processing payments. As the support has been added to the payment page. And, and I'm going to show you this, and it's, it's a lot of you have been asking over the years, even if you have a payment schedules and so forth, sometimes people will only be able to pay outside a payment schedule or something along those lines. And they can only pay you $100 right now. Some of you just sort of say, I'm sorry, you have to abide by the payment schedule. But we now allow you as an administrator to make partial payments through the payment adjustment page. Very controlled use. Uh, so you're able to go in and record payments through the payment processing page. And I will show you that in just a little while. And then there's reporting on gift, loyalty, and grant cards as well, grant accounts. So there's a couple of things I just want, I say remember, some of this you're probably hearing for the first time. But there's a, an important thing to remember here, especially for the accounting folks, it's a critical thing. It's important that you assign gift card purchases to their own financial accounts so that you can keep track of that. So even though those are monies you're accepting, it's essentially a liability account, which will be used as a form of payment toward other items. So in order to keep track of that, it's important you put it to your financial, its own financial account. And I could have individual meetings with folks that wanna use this to make sure that they understand that point. Because Purchases that use gift cards, loyalties, or grants online also show up as an online payment. But we need to be think, begin to think about payments in Double Knot that are taken through sales station, be it cash check, credit card, grant, whatever it happens to be, will show up as an online payment as well. So we have to make sure that we don't double count your revenue, double count at meeting. We don't count the sale of the gift card and also the use of the gift card as payment. So you're gonna to have to be careful and just account for that. It's not overly complicated, but the accounting folks are gonna to have to be aware of that. Uh, you could also use the payment detail report that I'll show you to find out whenever you're running your financial reports, how much of that revenue was actually for a, uh, was applied to, uh, using a grant, a, a gift card or a loyalty account. And I'll show you those, so hopefully it'll become clear. The other thing is if you want one or more of these options turned on for your organization, just send an email to support at doublenut.com and then they will take care of setting that up for you, send you the documentation. And if your finance me group wants to have a meeting about it, we could certainly arrange that meeting as well. Just one other thing I should just remind, just sort of mention here is that the transaction fees for when a transaction is actually conducted, if you're purchasing a gift card and you're using that credit card to make that purchase online, the transaction fee applies. If you're using that gift card as a form of payment for a registration, there is no transaction fee for that. So it's not like you're double paying for both when you purchase the gift card as well as when you're using that gift card. So I just wanted to point that out as well. So I'm gonna run into, go into a couple of demos here. Now I'm logged into two different browsers uh, just to sort of show you a couple of things. So here's a browser and I am logged in. This is a test site and I am gonna go show you how to sell a gift card and then we'll log as an administrator and I'll show you how you create gift cards and sell gift cards through point of sale as well. And I'll also show you the new payment adjustment screen that allows you to enter payments. So let's go into here. I'm an end user, I'm not logged in. I'm gonna click on that hyperlink and what comes up are all about gift cards. We can review with you how to go and create these kinds of pages. 
we could also link directly to a gift card. But for this purpose, I'm just gonna go in, I'm gonna buy a $100 gift card and two uh, $200 gift cards. Probably wanna use those as presents. And I'm gonna go and check out of the system and I can continue shopping. So it's, it's just in my shopping cart. And I can go and I can check out. Now, I'm in a test account. This is the integrated donation. I think you're all aware of that. Uh, I'm in a test account. And the reason I bring that up is credit card numbers are already filled in. This is just for our internal testing. So these credit card numbers are just test credit card numbers. But when you get to the payment page, based on whether or not you have gift cards and or loyalty cards enabled, you'll see those two additional options on your payment page. You won't see grants here. Grants are applied elsewhere, and I'll review that later. So right now what I'm doing is just gonna purchase those gift cards, those two $200 gift cards and the um, $100 gift card. So the person gets a copy of their receipt, and I'm gonna to go to, being this is a test site, all of these emails go to a test email account. So let me go and um, go to that email account. All right, so we want to go to this email account and this is just a test account where all these things go to so we don't mistakenly send out emails to real people. So I'm just gonna go to um, a, a, a copy of that receipt. And what we're gonna see is here is that receipt for the one $200 gift card and the two $200 gift cards. And you're gonna see attached to this are the three gift cards. So if I click on one of these, what's gonna come up is a document, which is a format you can create. It's a Microsoft mail merge document. So in this example, we put in a header and just some instructions to the person as how they can go use this. It thanks them for their purchase. It has their card number and it has the uh, card, uh, the value on the card, which is $100. So this is an example. You can modify this template with your logo and your wording and whatever you'd like to see there. So that's how that gift card is actually sent to the user. So at this point, if I go back to that screen where I was earlier, and um, I just go back here and I am gonna go to, uh, let's see if I have a calendar here. So I see I have grandparents day. So I'm just gonna go and register for this event. And if I go and register for this event now, again, I'm not logged in as an end user. It's not asking me for a lot of information. So when I get to my payment page at this point, I can say, uh, I want to, now use a gift card as a form of payment. And when I use that, I can enter that card number in there, which was on that sheet of paper that was emailed to me, and I can make that payment. And I will tell you that what happens here, by the way, is you can see I used gift card and I used a $25 payment. Had there not been enough money on that card to cover the cost of this purchase, I would ask them for another form of payment, which could be a credit card or other gift cards or loyalty cards in this case as well, since both are enabled. So both of those, that's how that would go and work. So you can sell them, the users automatically issued their number, they have it, and uh, they can use that for purchases going forward. So that's the purchase of a gift card online, and then how do we go and use that gift card? So let me go and now go into the system where we are logged in and show you a little bit on the back end. Again, we're on a test site. And so here are these gift cards. So let's look at how we go and we create these cards. So if I want to, so if I go to, I'm gonna start at this area first in financial accounts. So if I go to financial accounts, if one or more of those instruments is enabled, this tab would appear. And if you only had gift cards, it would say gift cards. If you only had gift cards and grants, it would say gift cards and grants. So if I click on that, what I will do is I'll get, I'll have the ability to do a few different things, but the one I wanna look at right now is view accounts and transactions. 
So right now we can see that we have this, uh, these gift cards that we sold. So here are all of these gift cards and the gift card numbers. Okay. Uh, we have the three we just purchased, we just sold the, 200, the two $200 ones and the one $100 one. Notice the $100 one, the balance is only 75. And that's because we used it for the registration for Grandparents Day. I click on this and I view details. I can actually go through and see the details of here's when the card was issued, here's when the balance was updated with the initial $100, here's when a purchase was made, and if I expand it using that plus key, I can actually see the specific purchases. So you can go and do that. You could also run reports on these things as well from the financial report side. Now, these are gift cards. I can go and create loyalty cards. I can also go and create grants. So grants is interesting because I might create a new grant, call it the, uh, I'm gonna put in there, the Joe G Education Fund. Now, notice it says account number, but I'm gonna use the actual name of the grant and it's a big grant, it's a thousand dollars and I could put that there and I can go and issue that. And so right now I have a grant with a thousand dollars on it. So there's my grant uh, and it's the Joe G Ed Fund. And you can see there's a thousand dollars that's on that. So unlike a, a, unlike a grant, excuse me, a gift card or a loyalty card, I cannot use that as a form of payment um, through SalesStation or the front end. We just want to put tighter control on that. So how do we use that for a form of payment? So I can go into, I'll just go to event management. We had that grandparents stay there. So I'll just use that as an example. I think I'll start out here someplace, a grandparents day. And if we went in and did a registration or a registration existed, and I'll just do a new registration um, of course, I, I put names in this one. Let's see, Joe, 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 Sally. So I have a registration here. Now, this is probably not a good example of a registration where I would use grant money, but if it was a school group visit or, or a, another group visit that qualified for the grant, you can go and do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to, I'm going to select no payment, pay offline. And, um, and I'm gonna go to my payment adjustment screen, which I think you're all pretty familiar with. All right, so I'm gonna answer that question and just, uh, Nikki, in just a minute. So at this point, uh, you know, you can always have done your offline payment adjustments, but notice now we have the ability to do credit card payments electronic check, gift card, grants, loyalty, cash, and check as well. So we have the ability to go and use these different form of payments. So at this point, I could say grant. I could say it was the Joe G N Fund. I hope I got it right. And I want to only use uh, $15 of that grant for this payment. And so I can go and do that. Let me just go and put 15. Okay, so I use $15 of that grant for this payment. And now at this point, if I wanted to use a credit card for the remaining amount, I can go and do that by just going to credit card, putting in the credit card number, and then applying the remaining uh, $15 with a credit card. So before what I mentioned, outside of gift cards, grants, and loyalty cards, if you ever have a reason to take a partial payment outside of the schedule for a payment schedule, is that you do have the ability to come in here and say credit card and not take the full amount, but some partial amount uh, for the credit card. And so people have been asking that for a while, some of you, not a a highly requested feature, but you do have the ability now to go and do that and actually process the credit card or a take cash. And all of these would show up as online payments inside of DoubleMind. Okay. 
So the offline would still show up the same way. So that's how I can go and do that. So I'd use that grant right now for those particular monies. And if I go back to my financial accounts and I click on financial accounts and I say view and I go to my grant and I see Joe G, you can see that my $1,000 grant only has $985. So if I try to use a grant, in this case, any of these, where the balance isn't sufficient, you have to go back in and use another payment method in order to go and, um, uh, in order to complete the payment process, okay? There you go, so that's how that works. So now you'll notice that you have these names here and I can go to gift cards and I could even, I think I could even create gift cards here as well. Nikki's here, I'll answer your question. So I could say uh, Joe G gift and it is a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars and I could issue that gift card. And so right now I have a gift card where the number I would actually enter in would be Joe G gift. And the reason we did that is that when you want to run reports, especially with grants, you want to run finance reports, say, show me everywhere where this particular grant was used, you're more easily able to go and do that. Uh, some of you are using discount codes and codifying a discount where the first few letters match the grant number. Well, you don't really need to go and do that anymore. So, Back to the, Nikki, your question, they, when you sell the gift cards online, the gift card numbers are automatically generated. A six is the beginning. Six is typically used for gift cards in the industry. The next five digits is your unique organization key. And then there's a random number that's generated for the remaining uh, of the 15 digits. So if I sell a gift card online, the number is automatically generated. Now, with any of these cards, if you want to take additional payment, reload the card, you're able to go and do that and put more money on the card. So you have the ability to go and change these balances by adding monies uh, from the cards that way. Okay. So we're doing on time. We're doing pretty good. All right. So if there are any more questions, keep asking the questions. There haven't been many so far. So let me go to feature list. And I'm going to show you how to go and sell these gift cards online. So if I go to store management, when you request the, we configure your account for gift cards, we're also going to go in and, and create a new supplier type called double knot gift card. That's the, that's the, that configuration is what actually uh, tells double knot when I sell this, I want to enable, I want to actually generate a gift card account and it will do the numbering and all of those as well. So we'll, and we'll create that for you when we do the configuration of your account to accept gift cards. So I have that supplier there. Uh, I typically would go in and create a category for called gift cards and, I, and I've done that. And then what we're able to do is I can go and click on manage products and when I manage products, I'm looking at the gift card category. I have my gift cards that I want to sell here. So in this case, maybe I'm just going to go and create a new product. I'm going to say it's our $9,099 gift card. And um, so we have that gift card. So gift cards have to be sold in predetermined amounts. So it's not like someone says, I want to buy a gift card for $45. So you can create a gift card for the various amounts and name them that what you want. So in this case, I have the $9,999 gift card. Okay. Uh, I am going to say that, um, just have to go slowly here. I'm going to go and say my minimum order quantity, my maximum, I could say 10. I just want people to be able to do more than one. And I always miss this one. Where, where is it? The supplier. I'm not sure why I always have a hard time picking that up. And there's a supplier drop down here. Unless somebody, oh, here it is. Uh, the supplier drop down, and I'm going to say double nut gift card. 
And so I've created the gift card, $999. I said, there's my gift card. I'm going to say it's tax exempt. I'm not going to charge tax when they buy the card. If you have tax when they do another purchase, it would be uh, charged then. And I am also going to say that I want to, as I said before, I'm going to want to put this into the gift card financial account so I can keep track of what that gift card liability account should look like. So if I put everything in there correctly, I just hit save and we have that gift card and there's our, maybe I didn't put it in the right. See if I have, maybe I didn't put it in the right category. See if I did that. Yeah, I didn't put it in the category called gift card. And I've done that. So right now we've created that gift card. If I go in there and purchase that gift card, um, it will be there among that list to go and do that. We can also show you if somebody wants to do that, uh, we can also show you how to create this page. It's a site brander page and we can show you how to go and add those items into that, okay? Um, so what I wanna do now is I'm gonna show you how to go and use these gift cards inside of Sales Station. So if I go into Sales Station, I clicked on Site Brand of my mistake. If I click on Sales Station and I go through, and if you're not familiar with Sales Station, um, I think most of you are at this point, but we should go through it. It's available, no extra cost to go and use it. It allows you to go and sell merchandise or check people in at events and so forth. But in this case, I have a station I created where I'm selling tickets and tours and so forth. But one of the items I also have here is a gift card, which just opens up that category. And I could select which gift card I want to purchase. So if somebody is at the, wants to buy some gift cards, they can go and do that. So we can buy the gift card. And at this point, I can go and charge the card and they say they took cash. And if I send a copy of the receipt via email to, um, to that person, they would actually get the email with their gift card on it. And so they now have received a copy of their receipt and attached to that receipt is the gift card that we saw before. But just like online, if somebody is making a purchase, right? So we went in, we bought some general admission tickets or, or product or registered for an event, all those things can be done through Sales Station. And somebody wants to pay with a gift card, they would be able to do that and they would be able to go and pay uh, with that. So what do we name that one? Joe G gift. I think that was the one we had. Good. Yeah. So I took $40 off of that one. So I just paid using that gift card on point of sale. So again, I could use that online or I could use that on site. Notice that we did not make, because there was some specific requests, we did not make grants available for use at the uh, point of sale, because we want more control as to who can use that. So let me see. Uh, what if someone wants to purchase a gift card at the sales station, but also wants to leave the gift card, uh, leave with the gift card in hand? Um, you could print it. So how would you print that? Um, if you had a printer, or you could always give them their number, but you'd have to go and do a search on that particular card. Let me just go see if we could find that. Good question. Let me see if I can actually see that receipt. Yeah, I can't right here. Uh, you'd have to actually go into the admin interface and print that card for them. So you'd have to go and do it through that method. It wouldn't be printable right from sales station, but you could do it just by leaving sales station and uh, not just by, but by leaving sales station and going to the, um, and going through the normal interface and printing it that way. Okay. Other questions? All right. So let me show you a couple of more things and then we'll wrap up. So if I go back to the system and I go to finance.
and I go to finance reports, there's a report here called purchase detail. The reports on the test site are different because we have a bunch of different reports that we're developing or testing and so forth. So this bring up the transactions for yesterday and you can see all of the uh, transactions, including the different credit cards or gift cards and so forth. We're going to create another report that will show you based on the time frame how many gift cards you actually sold. Okay. So that would be something that we're going to want, you're going to want to look at. So this is, these are the gift cards, excuse me, gift cards you actually used. So that allows you to move the money from the liability account on your, in your accounting system to the appropriate account uh, for the event or the purchase that they made. So you're able to go and identify those transactions in the system. And I did one report here and, and we can meet with a, the rep, your finance folks um, in order to review that in more detail. So a derivative report that was created just from that one brings up all the different payment methods for the time, I just did current year. Uh, and you could see how much of each payment method was used to make a payment in the system. Okay. And again, we can meet with your finance folks and, and review that after you turn on the feature. So let me see if there are any more questions. Not many questions today. Either I'm doing a really good job or I've lost you all. So that's the that's the functionality of the gift card, loyalty accounts, and um, grants. And I did get another question, Gray. Um, if a council would like to issue a large number of gift cards as an incentive to our membership, what would be the easiest way to do so? I'm not sure you would use gift cards for that. You probably use loyalty cards so you could just track them differently, even though the behavior is the same. But you would have to go into the financial accounts and create those go into loyalty view and go into loyalty cards and then go and create those various cards. Uh, we can look at possibly doing an import for you if you wanted to go and create a whole bunch of them, but there's no direct import today to go and do that. We have talked about doing import and export for loyalty cards. So for instance, we know um, in Boy Scout world, they use troop accounts and so the ability to import troop accounts, export current balances, and manage those balances with through import and export uh, is something that we are looking at doing. So the ability to go and create it would be part of that import. But uh, Rosie, if you have specific, you just send me an email and we can have a further conversation about that. Okay. But gift cards, if that's what you want, Typically a gift card is something you'd probably sell, whereas the loyalty card is something that you would give out maybe along the lines of, of what you're talking about. All right, a bunch of questions came in. Uh, let's see here. How do, what can they be expiration? There are no expiration dates on the loyalty cards or any of these, mostly because the, most, you can, loyalty cards, you can have an expert, you can leave, you know, but gift cards, a lot of states don't allow you to expire them. But one of the things is that you can, you can uh, maybe state that policy that they expire one year from date of purchase, but the system will not expire them, but you can go through and expire them through the admin interface. Uh, when looking to identify the sales associated with the gift card purchase, you said purchase details, but the screen says payment details, which is correct. Um, I, I, was, I, mean, I should have said payment details when I was describing it. When looking to identify the sale associated with the gift card. So if you want to see what was actually used for the sale of the gift card, that can be actually through this interface. If you're looking for a specific gift card, right? You can see what the sale 
associated with it was. So you can always see that here, but you can also, uh, if you wanted to see specific information, the available, the information's also available in reports. So if I go to the finance reports, uh, and this says payment details, uh, payment details, this is by method. This is primarily used when you're doing reconciliation. So that's not the one you would say where it was used. Uh, but your revenue report can show you where those were used. So for instance, if I go to the revenue report, and let's do you see, you can add to this revenue report. So for instance, if I had a grant and I wanted to show all purchases for that grant, uh, I can actually show here payment method and that payment method would be grant. I'm doing this on the fly here, so excuse me. So I can go in here and I can see gift card and I can go back. This is only looking at today. So I went back and looked for a bigger period of time. This is look at yesterday. So I'm going to look at current quarter if I could see something. So you can actually do filtering on this that says, show me all of, just, just show me grants. Let me see if I find a grant here. I don't, but I could filter this report based on grants and only particular grants based on the grant number that I gave it. And so I can build a report that says, show me the purchases where this grant was actually used. And I can get back to you. If you want to, uh, Lark, we can get to more details on that. Just reach out to me, joe at doublenut.com, and, and I can go into more detail with you on that. This, I just have to look for more test data to maybe better explain it. Other questions? They all came there at the end. You answer my question. Okay. Yeah, so you can find out exactly what, what purchases were associated with what grant. All right. So with that, um, we will get this online within a day or so. And all of those you can go up and see under training videos and you'll see all the webinars there. And this webinar will be among those, those webinars that we post online. So I appreciate everybody's time. Hope you have a great week and a great 4th of July next week. Take care.